you about a project in Toronto that we're working on, Humber River Hospital. It opens in October of this year, and it's very much about piecing together and keeping in, in uh, stride, stride with today's theme. We've brought ideas together from industry, from the digital world, from other hospitals, from education, and we are creating what we refer to as North America's first digital hospital. And since nobody's ever challenged us about that in the last five years, we're sticking with it. And I just want to tell you a little bit about how we got there, and a little bit about how if you do piece ideas together, you can come up with something that's pretty neat. Humber River, I should say, is a hospital in northwest Toronto. Like many hospitals in Ontario, we have three old buildings, all of which are about 1940s, 1950s vintage. We've been given a great opportunity to build a new hospital in Toronto on a Greenfield site at Keele in the 401, if you know the city, so just down the road from here. Um, the hospital will open in October of 2015, 656 beds, 130,000 emerge visits, 450,000 people a year will come and have care with us, and it will be um, open on the 18th of October. So we had lots of reasons, and these are some of them why we wanted to be a more efficient hospital, but if you take anything away, remember this. The Ontario tax dollars collected today, 42% of those go to health care, and most of them to hospital care. And that's not sustainable. In fact, it takes away from social programs, from education, and from almost everything else. And so we respected being given this opportunity and wanted to look at ways of doing it different and decrease the cost of hospital care, making it much more efficient. So we um, created three vision elements, lean, green, and digital. And we talked about wanting to have patient-centered care. Patient-centered care is really about what the patient wants, them being part of planning their care. If you remember anything about patient-centered care, it's if you're a patient, don't do anything to you without you. And that's how we summarize it. The benefits to it are well known. People get out of the hospital quicker. They do much better post-discharge. Uh, post and they know how to look after themselves. Our vision elements of lean, green, and digital were for specific reasons. <clears throat> primarily borrowing ideas from many, many different sectors, piecing them together and creating a more efficient institution. So I'll talk briefly about green. Hospitals are considered to be brutal on the environment. Have you ever noticed we're a beacon of light 24 hours a day? We have huge digital equipment that draws lots of energy. We circulate lots of airflow. We create all kinds of steam and gases. <clears throat> and we brought together a bunch of industry leaders and said we wanted to be 40% more efficient than any other hospital in North America. And oh, oh by the way, we want 100% fresh air, all of which has to be heated or cooled. So we did bring together great groups of people, engineers, designers, people who understand air handling systems. The engineers really get it. And we brought them together and looked at what we could do. And using intelligent digital lighting systems, intelligent air handling systems, reuse of water, uh, a lot of different green initiatives, we actually were able to reach our target of 40%. So just as an example, when large parts of the hospital are not used after hours, the airflow system will be decreased to them, the lighting will be off, and the cooling will be decreased. And then, because it's a programmable building, when it's time to start the procedures, it will all come up and heat and cool quickly. All of that has made us to be 40.8% more efficient than any other hospital in North America. It's a $90 million savings over 30 years. And that money can go directly back into healthcare. But it's also 40% more energy efficient means we've taken 20,000 tons of CO2 out of the air, we've taken 4,000 cars off the road, and we've planted 7,000 7, acres of forest. Not well lined up, that's right. <coughs> Lean and digital are the two elements that really drove our efficiency and our design. So lean, for those of you that have done your engineering, know it's all about process redesign. And the work we did in our hospital told us that in the course of a day, a nurse, for example, on a medical unit walks 5.2 kilometers to deliver care. And if all we did was build the bigger building and all of our private rooms that we're putting in, every patient will have their own room, she'd walk 11.6 kilometers in a day to deliver care. Already, a nurse only has 30 minutes a day to spend with any single patient, providing direct care. The rest of her time is spent collecting and gathering, going back to the desk to answer telephone calls, looking for the chart, trying to enter data into it, and no wonder patients feel like they're not really the center of activity in the hospital. So we looked at ways of changing that through design, and we looked at ways of making our building more efficient. Now, most of what we pay money for in hospitals, in fact, 74% of it, is people walking around and delivering care. 
And we called that sneaker time. And what we were looking for was ways to decrease our sneaker time. And we did that through our design, but we primarily did it through our digital technology. We worked with people, we studied, and we figured out what prevents them from being successful in spending more time with the patient. We wanted to leverage technology and push technology in a way it hadn't been done before and try to improve the efficiency of care and really to still be hunting and gathering in this day and age is a bit weird, but we pay people to do that in hospitals. We wanted to find a way around it. So we did do that through our digital uh, technology systems and we brought together ICAT, Information Communication Automation Technology. So many people know about sharing information, you all know about communicating. We drew into that automation and technology and we refer to it as ICAT. Many hospitals today and many schools, everybody has a facility that can be smartly managed and you can manage your air cooling and your lighting system. And you have medical technology and lots of equipment that is able to um, be able to display images and do things like that. And then you have communication tools. That's integration, that's data being able to be displayed and shared among systems. What we did was move one step further. We moved to interoperability. And interoperability is very different. Interoperability is about those disparate systems not only being able to speak to each other, but to share information with each other, to analyze that information, and to cause an action to occur. And how did we do that? We created a system that is actually a um, medical grade converged infrastructure, we call it, I call it a bus. All of our technology in the hospital, the building, the facility systems, everything, are connected through that bus. And the reason we call it a bus is the information is all traveling along together. And then when they're there together, they can share information, share ideas, draw back information that they need to make an analysis and cause an action to occur. And that's what it's about. So what it means is with this data being able to share, the people will be mobile, people will be connected, systems will be automated, and people will be empowered. But let me give you an example. Today, if a patient needs to have blood work drawn in a hospital, and I'm sure many of you have been there, the doctor will write an order and somebody will have to recognize that order in the chart and fill out a requisition and send the requisition to the laboratory and somebody will pick it up and they'll collect their tubes and they'll come upstairs and they'll draw the blood and then they'll go back down to the lab and run the lab results and at some point phone them up to the nursing station or put them into the chart and somebody will need to notice them, assess whether they're normal or not and then call the doctor and hope that they're there when the doctor calls back so the patient can have treatment. At the New Humber Hospital, what will happen is the physician will speak into his mobile device, order the blood work, the technician who needs to draw it will be notified on their handheld, the nurse caring for the patient will also be notified, the blood work will be drawn, it will be sent through a very uh, specialized pneumatic tube system directly to the laboratory, it will go on to the machine, the lab results will be done immediately, and then when those lab results are done, because of the bus, there will be an exchange of information, if they're normal, the results will be reported to people's handheld. If they're abnormal, they will be reported to the handheld of the doctor and the nurse immediately. There will be an action expected, and within a prescribed period of time, if that action is not fulfilled, then there will be a reminder. So just a different way of doing care because you can allow that kind of analysis. In our new hospital, all of our patients will have their own room. And you get patient-centered care, and when you start to have private rooms, you have the opportunity to share information and to share technology. And so each of the rooms will have a 47-inch screen at the foot of the bed and a computer at the bedside. That can also be a TV, entertainment, email. But more importantly, it's access to the patient's phone chart. So they too know what's going on, they can see what's happening with them, they can be part of planning their care. That system will also allow them to do FaceTime with their nurse. So I don't know if you've been a patient in the hospital, you press the call bell and some voice says, can I help you? At Humber, actually in the face of one of the staff, will appear on that TV screen and it will be a FaceTime communication method. As well, family members will be able to do FaceTime with patients. All of our staff will carry a name tag that has a real-time locating device in it. And when I walk into that room, it'll say my name and that I'm a nurse or whatever role I fulfill. Again, you know, people in other industries track equipment. The, more, the um, companies that make cars wouldn't think of not tracking every piece of equipment and every device as it goes along on the chain. We don't do that in healthcare. But I talked to you about the hunting and gathering and the fact that that's most of what we pay people for. 
So all of our equipment and all of our technology will have real-time locating devices on it. And as a nurse, when I'm looking for a piece of equipment, as a physician, when I'm looking for something, I just need to call it up on my handheld device, and I'll know where the most available free piece of equipment is in the building. And I can go and get it instead of hunting around and trying to gather it. We also brought some ideas to bear from other industries. Um, and the first picture you see there is our, uh, yeah, let's go up here, our robot. This is an automated guided vehicle, first time being used in a hospital in Canada. It's a couple of installations in the United States. But industry wouldn't think of pushing carts of supplies around. They use what they call automated guided vehicles. And we did create them with a company that was willing to work with us on it. And these devices wander around the hospital. They pick up carts of supplies. They know when to pick them up. They know where they're going. They wheel the carts over. They call the elevator themselves. They might say hello to you if you're on it. They will know what floor they're going to. If you get in their way, they'll ask you to please move. They're trying to deliver supplies. If there's something in their way that doesn't move, they actually have the ability to send a message back to headquarters to have somebody come and move that item. Once they've delivered the product, they send a message to the person who requires the product to let them know that it's been delivered. That technology alone saved us 168 kilometers of walking time a day in this building delivering supplies and it represents about $3 million of savings a year. Again, an opportunity to put money back to direct patient care. The second device probably looks to many of you who have lived in a condo like a garbage chute and a laundry chute, and it is, but it's a technologically smart one, again, bringing ideas from industry together. When I go to dispose, what happens now in a hospital when you dispose of garbage, you may have seen it, is it all goes into a room, the linen goes there, it gets put up on a big cart, wheeled around, uh, probably not the cleanest process, take it to the garbage or linen room and discard it. In our new hospital, what will happen is that people will, from the source of use, take the garbage, dispose of it in those chutes. And what happens is, with the press of a code and a swipe of your name badge, it, you will be able to define whether it is recyclable or garbage or linen. And it will be delivered from the point of use straight out to the garbage truck or the linen trucks off-site so that people will not be pushing that kind of contaminated waste around the hospital. Also a very efficient way to go. Our final device, and one that we've just recently started to use, is our R2-D2. And I told you that nurses wander and patient care providers wander around and they're always hunting and gathering for things. This is a device that will be wandering our nursing units. And when I'm a nurse and I'm looking for something and I forgot to bring it into the room with me, I can use my handheld device, ask R2-D2 here to bring it to me. They'll come to the room that I'm in, I'll be able to select the item I want, and they'll leave. They are laser guided, they travel on their own, and it's going to make us much more efficient and be able to get people things. I think what will happen is that our patients will also want to play with those and uh, have them bring them things, and we'll work on that. Um, I did talk about our TLS devices, so just to remember, you know, airports and lots of people like that, they use these kinds of devices to track things. We don't do that in hospitals. We don't track our patients. We sometimes don't know where people are in the building. So even if you register as a patient at Humber River, you'll receive an armband that has a tracking device on it. So let me paint you the picture in the new hospital. If you're a patient at Humber River and you're coming for a procedure, just like you do for the airport, you can sign on the night before, download an app to your handheld device to your PDA, you can check all of your information, answer questions, sign all of your forms digitally, and send them in, and they'll, they'll arrive in the hospital system. When you arrive in the hospital that day, your PDA will tell us, your, your app will tell us that you arrived, and you will use a system very similar to Google Maps to find out where you need to go. Your staff will know that you're there before you get there. The only thing you'll need to do is put an armband on. If you're having a procedure, that armband is a tracking device. Now, we know where you go, we know where you're traveling in the hospital, and your family, who may be with you or may be at home, will know where you are too. They'll know when you go into an operating room, they'll know when that surgery is completed, they'll know when you leave the operating room and go to the recovery room. But we'll know where you are too. We will know where people, patients, staff, and things are. And we think that that's an appropriate way to work, but again, it's piecing information together. It's looking at what do other industries do, how do they track things in people, and we've adapted it to healthcare. We also have a, a system that we call the doctor is in. And so often, if you've ever been a family member and you've gone to the hospital and you want to speak to the doctor after hours, he's not there. 
We're going to, we have devices set up where we're able to do FaceTime with our patients and our staff and physicians. And so, if a patient's condition is deteriorating or if a patient requires, um, wants to communicate with their family, we have a robot type device that will just wheel into the room. They'll be able to do FaceTime and examine patients. As well, healthcare is not singular anymore. We really have to rely on experts from all around the world. And what this does is actually allow roving rounds to be done. So we have worked with some of the physicians at, uh, at the uh, hospitals here in Kingston, the University of Toronto, and in fact around the world, allowing them to examine our patients and help us decide what to do through equipment very much like this called the doctor is in. As well, in the operating room, in the procedural rooms, and places like that in the hospital, um, again, all of the information that we're working with, because it's traveling on this electronic bus, will be able to be shared with anyone who we need to get some help and some advice from. And that's going to allow us not only to show what we're doing, but to provide safer, higher quality care, because people are going to be able to help us, experts from around the world, if we have a problem. But integration of that kind of technology really comes to bear on things like uh, just the patient's everyday environment, their vital signs. Right now, if somebody wants to take your blood pressure, have to write it on a chart, they have to figure out whether it's normal or abnormal for you. At the New Humber Hospital, that information will be downloaded automatically from the smart bed. We'll know the patient's temperature, we'll know their weight, we'll know what condition their skin's in, we'll be able to tell the blood pressure, the heart rate. That information will not only go into the chart, but it will be analyzed. And if it's abnormal, your physician, your staff, people will be made aware of it on their handheld device. Don't actually have to wait for them to try to find it. So again, another way of linking pieces of technology, providing safer and more efficient care. And that has been our goal all along. So our hospital opens in October of 2015. We will move to that facility starting at 6 o'clock in the morning. Most of our technology is in and it's just kind of been an opportunity for us to do something different, and we hope improves the quality and safety, and particularly the cost of healthcare in the hospital. Thank you.